Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine in the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The psalm anthem is actually a psalm carol, so if you happen to have a hymnal near you, if you could join to 276, we will sing the next carol. bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave, gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was, a, was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have rookies in the, in the sound booth, in case you hadn't noticed. They're doing a great job, though. Fear, darkness, seems to be something that brings out fear, and we always have our our fears in life. Uh, I, I'm sure some of you have seen the commercial, TV commercial for a security system. I think it is on do-it-yourself TV. But it shows a little girl in the middle of the night comes walking into mom and dad's bedroom and says, Daddy, there's monsters under my bed. And the dad goes and picks up his daughter and says, Oh, honey, let me show you something. And he walks over to the wall, and there is the little thing for pushing the buttons on the security system. And he goes, Look at this security system. This is going to keep out all the monsters. You have no worries at all about monsters. And of course, she bought it and went to bed. None of us would. There's monsters under the bed. A security system isn't going to keep them away, is it? You might like this. Of course, on the internet, there's all kinds of things about our fears, and there's a whole website dedicated to deep, dark fears. For instance, this one. If an animal stares but does not approach, it's because they are able to see the invisible darkness of your soul. I thought that was funny. That might indicate the darkness of my soul. <laughs> darkness is a universal metaphor for the human predicament. Darkness. The people of Israel, Isaiah, outlined their darkness, a very dark time, being taken over by a invading army. And Isaiah uses the word when he says, the people who walked in darkness, for darkness he uses a very special word in Hebrew, which is Zalmoeth. Zelmoeth. And in Zelmoeth, those people who spend their whole lifetime just studying uh, the book of Isaiah, they always want to find the derivation of, that, uh, of, the, of the words. And that word happens to be a Canaanite word. And it refers to a Canaanite, they believe uh, the Canaanites named an evil god. Zel Moeth. And that evil God was believed to be always lurking in the back of one's life, ready to pounce and to destroy. And it's that word now that became a Hebrew word. And it means this darkness, this sense of foreboding that's they're lurking, ready to destroy our lives. Because Zel Moeth, by the way, it was uh, David in Psalm 23 who used Zel Moeth when he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Zel Moeth, shadow, or death shade, they also called it. The shadow hanging over us. 
something to leap out and grab and destroy one's life. So because of that word, they suggest, no, I'm boring you right now, but they suggest because of that word, this darkness refers to all those those things that invade our lives, both we as a culture, we as a, a people, where we call ourselves a we, those kinds of things would be our fear of uh, terror and terrorists, racial unrest, war, poor economy, or maybe an economy that's just good enough to keep some people employed, but bad enough not to let them really prosper. Personally, we walk in darkness at times. Might be walking with a loved one as they go through a life-transforming illness. Sometimes we walk through things like cancer, heart disease, or some debilitating illness. I was with Ann Wilbur this morning and Anne was near death this morning. She died this afternoon. And I said, Anne, the end is near. She was walking through that valley, that darkness. Might be losing a job. All kinds of things bring out that darkness that, that we fear. The answer came in a gift to us that we, if we were going to ask for a gift in this darkness, to pull us out of the darkness, we wouldn't say, God send a baby. But the way God works is God provides an answer in ways we don't expect and maybe even don't even think we want. He sends a baby. And Isaiah talks about, unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given, and his name will be Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God. That baby, the early Christian writers immediately said, was the Messiah. Jesus, born in Bethlehem. The answer to our darkness, the light to lighten our darkness. Rabbi Michael Goldberg wrote a book contrasting Judaism and, and uh, Christianity, both comparing and contrasting, showing where they had similarities. And he said, you know, the interesting thing he finds about, about Christianity is when God acted in Christianity, he sent a son and it was as if humans couldn't do anything themselves. He said, with Jewish people, when God acted, he called Moses and Moses at least needed to, to do something. With, with Christians, it seemed like God had to do something so profound people only needed to be remain passive. God acted. God gave a gift. And he gives us grace and mercy. And if that darkness happens to be something we've done that fills us with guilt, he answers with grace and forgiveness. If it is death, he answers with resurrection. Unto us a child is born.